Hi, my name is Minika and this is my vlog. I'm doing a pantry challenge uh, in which I set some rules for myself. Uh, please see the first part of this uh, video series. It's a big word it's calling something a series if this is only part two. Uh, but I try to follow my rules and this is my update. So um, I've been going for about nine days now. Uh, I have not bought any food that was not uh, outlined in my rules. Uh, I had one cheat day um, having a friend over for dinner and we had a lovely, lovely meal, all James Bond themed. Um, I'll put some of the pictures on the screen. My husband and, my, and our friend uh, watched five of the James Bond movies, all of the Daniel Craig ones. Um, and I decided to do a menu based on the titles, just the titles, uh, of some of the other movies. Uh, so we started off, of course, of course, with a vodka martini. It was my first martini ever. It was very nice. It tasted kind of like licorice. It was cool. It was good. Um, then we had a, um, a From Russia With Love, a borscht. Well, kind of a borscht. I didn't have all the ingredients. Um, it probably wasn't very Russian, but it did taste very nice. Uh, this one was served cold, by the way, so very summery. Uh, then we had a combi combination of uh, Thunderball and Octopussy um, in the form of um, meatballs in a tomato sauce and, uh, of course, calamari. Um, then the main course uh, was based on um, Honor Majesty's Secret Service, uh, which was... A coronation chicken uh, with a side of diamonds are forever in the form of some carrots. I've had to explain my thinking multiple times. It's a carrot. You measure diamonds in carrots. I thought it was funny. Um, and uh, the coronation chicken, by the way, is a uh, curry chicken salad, basically, which was also eaten cold. So again, very summery. Um, and we ended up with uh, a gold finger, which was a lovely bowl of ice cream, very good vanilla ice cream with some whipped cream on top, some caramel sauce, and a gold painted shortbread finger. So that was the gold finger for you there. Um, I also added some uh, extra decoration so the little gold, bo gold balls would be a golden eye. Um, and, well, maybe the man with the golden gun is in there somewhere too. We had a lot of fun. Um, I went to bed after we watched, I think, about a third of Spectre. Um, the guys stayed up. Uh, on Sunday I wasn't at home, so the guys watched um, the No Time to Die together. Uh, but I've seen it, so it, it's okay. I'll watch it again sometime. Uh, I spent a lovely day at Castle Fest, uh, where a friend of ours uh, was kind enough to give me some of the um, coins that they use there. Uh, so I uh, did uh, also bring my own lunch, but I got a lovely, lovely meal of a um, what's it called, a bratwurst on a on a bun, uh, and some iced coffee. Plus, someone else actually brought us. Some baked goods. We we got cake, so I'm not gonna say no to free cake. It was very nice. It was a white chocolate and a raspberry cake. Thank you so much, Eliza. Um, so for the challenge, I've been trying to only uh, use stuff that I wouldn't normally use or make things that I wouldn't normally make. Last time I made the uh, uh, pasta bake, and uh, last the the recipe you're going to see today is a. Um, uh, smoked mackerel and cabbage dish. Basically, I just googled random things I had in the fridge and in the freezer and I had smoked uh, mackerel and I had cabbage and this came up. It was very, very nice. Uh, it's a little mustardy. It's uh, uh, low in um, uh, carbohydrates because there's basically there's not something like rice or potatoes, but you could add those if you want. Um, it was... Uh, pretty heavy. It's very creamy. It's like a, a, a roux sauce and it's, it, it can be very creamy at least. Um, topped with a little cheese. You can all see all of that in the um, video in a few minutes. Um, so on with the recipe. So here's my ingredients. This is the cabbage, uh, two and a, one and a half onion, the mackerel, some milk, pecans, 
well, salt, pepper, and mustard, cheese, I love cheese, uh, some butter, and some more mustard. These are just packages I had in the fridge. Uh, some um, flour, and of course my baking dish. So first I'm going to start off by, um, normally you'd start with making the roux, but uh, this particular recipe doesn't quite do that. Um, it starts by just making uh, or just just frying your onion and your cabbage um, and then makes the roux kind of just as you're already sauteing the uh, the vegetables so you just melt the butter and then after almost dropping everything from the sounds of it uh, you first add in the onion and you don't want it to actually fry up you just want it to be a little bit soft and a little bit well, more easy to handle. And you already add in the cabbage as well. Again, it's, it needs to be a very soft dish. So basically you're not so much frying it up. You're just, um, well, wilting it like you would do with uh, um, with spinach. Uh, you can see the volume, um, it will go down a lot. The cabbage will uh, go very soft and uh, I want to say gloopy, but that's not a very nice word to, to use when you're describing food. Um, it just goes soft and it's very nice and it keeps its flavor very well in this, uh, in this form. So you can see how much it's reduced in volume at this time. So the next step is to add about two tablespoons of flour. Um, I always have flour in my, fr in my uh, cupboard. Um, you can use basically anything as long as it's not self-raising. Um, I probably wouldn't use anything too coarse as a, either because you do need quite a fine flour. Um, you, you might try this with some non other green flours. I'm, I'm not sure if it will work, but you can always try. So about a, well, about two tablespoons, I'd say. The recipe says two, but um, I well things like this you can eyeball it. It's okay. Uh, so at this at this stage the vegetables have been all coated in the butter and you're basically trying to make a roux uh, that is clinging on to the cabbage and the onion here. Uh, so you, you'll see that any of the liquid uh, does get absorbed almost immediately. Also the fat gets absorbed and that's exactly what we want because we wanted this to actually form the base of the sauce. Um, that's, this is also why I use a, uh, uh, a spatula that has a uh, silicone edge because then you can scrape the edges a little bit. Um, then next you'll add in uh, 300 milliliters of milk. Um, I wanted to do this in a jug and I found out that my jug has a hole in the bottom so I had to throw it away so it's just glass. Uh, again you keep stirring, stirring, stirring. Uh, you just want this to all absorb in little pieces uh, but it will boil down a little bit more to make more of a sauce. Uh, the roux really helps here because it will thicken the milk into a uh, white sauce basically. Um, in other sauces you can do this with uh, um, things like uh, bouillon. Um, this recipe called for milk and it d d did give a very nice creamy uh, texture uh, and I, I like the taste of milk. I'm, I'm Dutch. I like milk. I'm, well, I like cheese. I like milk. I like basically anything you make from milk. Um, so again keep stirring. Um, then it's just mostly down to seasoning. You can already see the sauce thickening in the, uh, at the edges here, uh, but all down the sides. It's getting very saucy instead of just being very milky. So for seasoning, uh, we are using my mustard packets. Um, I think I got these when we uh, ordered some fast food a while back. Uh, mustard does not spoil, so you can just keep it in the fridge. If it's open, it actually can spoil, but if as long as it's a, uh, an unopened packet or an unopened jar, mustard shouldn't spoil, basically. Um, these packages are tiny. They're supposed to be for like one uh, croquette, uh, a very Dutch uh, delicacy. Uh, so I ended up using the both of them that I had and I added some more um, into it as well, some uh, other mustard, the jar you saw earlier. Uh, I like not only the flavor but also the texture that the mustard seeds bring and this was very smooth mustard. That's one of the reasons I decided to add a little more. Um, plus in a, a, a portion like this, only the two sachets really wouldn't have given that much flavor. You need a little bit more. So on we go with the jar. This is uh, Limburg's uh, mustard, which uh, is where I'm from. I'm from Limburg, which is all the way in the south of Holland. 
sorry, the Netherlands. I live in Holland now. Uh, there's uh, numerous videos about the difference between the Netherlands and Holland. So, so we add in the rest of the mustard. And on to the next uh, next batch of condiments. It's going to be some salt, uh, pepper. I like pepper. I like black pepper. So give it a good few turns of black pepper there. In hindsight, I could have used a little more pepper, but this was a very tasty dish. So in goes the mackerel. Um, I had some mackerel fillets, which I basically just plucked into the tiny little pieces. Um, I've taken the, uh, the I've, I've turned off the stove by now, so it doesn't overcook. Um, mackerel, uh, smoked mackerel is already basically cooked, uh, so you don't need it to give it any more heat, especially because this will go in the oven as well. Um, this is just mixing it around, making sure that uh, every bite will have some cabbage, some onion, some mackerel, some mustard, all the lovely flavors that are going to intermix in this uh, in this dish. Assembly is super, super easy. Basically, you just dump everything into a dish. I tried doing this by being, well, a little too neat. I tried to do this with the spatula spoon and it... it uh, after two spoons, I'm like, okay, who am I kidding here? Just dump everything in and uh, give it a nice, nice smooth finish. You can hear it all, uh, the, uh, the sauciness of it. You can hear it, uh, the, the gloopy little sounds. Again, gloopy is not the best word, but it describes what you're hearing. So last, the topping, which was uh, pecans, uh, some almond uh, flour, it wasn't in the picture first, and then some uh, uh, grated cheese. Uh, the Dutch have lovely cheese graters. Uh, this is actually a grating grater, but the other one you saw was a uh, was one for cheese slices. Um, almost everyone here in Holland has a first one. Uh, the second one, well, most people do, but not everyone does. This is a very handy tool. It means you don't have to bring out the huge ass grater if you just want to grate a little bit of cheese. Um, turn it around so it doesn't get all lumpy. This is cheddar cheese, uh, mature cheddar cheese. It has a lot of flavor, so uh, the recipe states 30 grams. I ended up uh, putting in 40, but it's just because I like cheese. It has enough flavor to carry the entire dish in these quantities. You can easily go get away with 30 as well, but I just really, really like cheese. <laughs> so you mix it around a little bit as soon as everything is in the bowl. I have, of course, washed my hands, so. mix it around make sure that uh, again you're going to get an even coat of the uh, topping and then you get down to assembling the uh, mixture is still warm uh, but it will uh, uh, oh this is my husband uh, asking when dinner will be ready and it should be uh, ready in 10 minutes after this point so you put on a nice even layer at first I thought this would be too much, but it turns out it really isn't. It's so good. It all gets all a little bit crispy um, and it just gives a lovely, lovely crunchy topping to a very smooth tasting dish. So here we are. It's 10 minutes later and the dish is coming out of the oven. There it is. There I am. See how lovely and golden and crunchy it is. Look, look. It's so good. It's so good. You can see that the pecans are really roasted. Uh, these were already roasted pecans as well, so they are a little bit dark, but they taste it so good. I have one confession. No, I didn't buy any food, but we did buy an extra freezer. Uh, our freezer is in the shed, which means that um, every time we need anything, uh, we have to go outside. Um, it's not always 
well, convenience basically. Uh, most people have a freezer in their kitchen. We did not. It wasn't here when we bought this house and when we changed something in the kitchen, we just didn't think about adding in a freezer. So uh, last Saturday I bought a tiny, tiny little freezer. It's only uh, like this big, which is awkward to show you on camera if I'm sitting down. Um, it, we're just going to use it because having to get bread out of the freezer in the shed at six in the morning isn't that easy. So it's going to be for bread, for some convenient stuff, and uh, it's just making life a little bit easier. But it's a bit, well, it 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 made me think. I'm doing a empty my freezer challenge, and what do I do? I buy an extra one. I've been talking to the camera while it wasn't filming.